Pizzo. It's always an honor. I was with him in Harare. Get I asked him to come and he honored me. And we, that environment will never be the same again. But anyway, let me get into the word. You got that word, eh? Amen. Oh, then come. It's what needs it. I really have to be honest with you. I feel like I'm burning inside. You have to ask my wife the dreams I've been having recently. For about two or three days, the last dream I had, and I, I'm not a person who normally dreams like that. You know? The first time I just woke up praying, the second dream I saw this place full and there was no space and I saw people sitting in the foyer and there was a line going out, a line of people going out. And then the third one, I saw in the, in the same dream, I was in a place, it was so full uh, with people and I was standing preaching. And then when he talks about Loving business. <laughs> I'm married to a woman who is so sensitive to business and the kingdom. <laughs> but I cannot tell you the things that are beginning to unfold in that area because they are private and they involve other people. But I'm just saying to you, I am confirming everything he is saying. Every single word. Honestly. Amen. So I can go sit down, right? Amen. <laughs> Acts chapter number 9, verse 1 and verse number 2. I was looking at this this thing you have here. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. They copied my notes. <laughs> so I'm speaking to you on raising a people of the way. Uh -uh, Batu. Shouldn't they be of the way there? I, ah, I see, I can pick up these things. <laughs> now Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. <clears throat> Verse number two. And ask for letters from him, who the high priest, of the, to the synagogues at Damascus, so that he, so that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Let me emphasize something in verse number two. So that if he found any there, who belong to the way. So the question is, how was he going to know the people who belong to the way? Let me 
You see, at this time, let me just give you a quick background. The church is going through a period where they are suffering. The church is being persecuted. And one of the persecutors is Saul. So this passage that we've just read gives us an indication of an identifiable people and a people that live by certain principles. And I would like to use their being able to be identified to live by the principles as a timeless lesson that we too in Harankua at this place can begin to live by. So when he says the people of the way, what does that mean? Who are these people of the way? We can't fully understand this until we look in the original to find what does it mean when you say the people of the way. The word way here is the Greek word hodos. And hodos speaks of a people or something that is distinct. So we are now talking of a people whose conduct, whose way of doing things is different from everyone else. It represents people that are operating or functioning or walking on a path. And these people are on a journey. And this journey that they find themselves in is guided by the principles of a particular standard. Tell your friend, you are on a road, but to live on this road, you have to live according to certain standards. I guess when you pull down all these mean meanings, you, you get back or down to a powerful word called pilgrimage. So we are on a pilgrim. Tell your friend, you are on a pilgrim. That's what makes you a person on the way. So there is this journey that you find yourself on. Who, and on this journey, your eyes are fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who tells you when to do what and how, not, how to do what needs to be done. So we are a people who have embraced a particular distinct lifestyle. Unfortunately, we find ourselves on this journey being a people that embrace a culture that is contrary to 
the prevailing culture. So we are a people who can be classified as the counterculture people. If everyone is going to the left, we go to the right. If everyone is going to the north, we are going south. What they do does not impact or have an impact on us. What we do is we listen to what the Lord of Lord Jesus is saying and we live according to what he says. So the people of the way do not study what's going on and copy what is being done. The people of the way are peace setters. The people of the way find ways of doing new things that have never been done before. So the way you will do business is not like how every businessman does business. Your way of doing business will come from what you hear when you put your ear on the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the people of the way will live according to the word of the Lord. In Matthew chapter 4 at verse number 4, this is what it says. And he answered and said. Or should I finish it? Oh, okay. And he answered and said. It, it is written. Man shall not live on bread alone. But on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And notice that the people of the word survive on every single word that is proceeding, coming out of the mouth of God. Your success is dependent on how obedient you are to every word that comes out of God's mouth. So as people of the way, you've got to learn to live by the word. God is looking for a people who make his word a standard to live by. Jonah puts it this way. In Jonah chapter 3, beginning verse 1, and I'll read the first three verses. Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh.
what's the point? Then they say, we are pap. <laughs> you see, people of the way have to remain people of the way even when there is pressure. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? We say we are people of the way when we are in church, but when culture is putting pressure on us, we forget who we are. You cannot, sorry, sorry. You cannot be a person of the way in the morning when you are in Kereke and in the afternoon when the family gathers you forget that in the morning you declared you were a person of the way. <laughs> so guess where I'm going to turn this thing to. I want us to have a marriage. A marriage ceremony. And today in here, there will be exchanging of vows. Did you, did you hear what I just said? There will be an exchanging of vows where you will declare your love to God. So let me remind you when you give or make vows when we help people get married what we ask them to say. So it says, I, George, take you, Feli, to be my wedded wife from this day forward. And we can say so many other things, but this is the most important one. Forsaking all others. <laughs> Did you hear that? Forsaking all others. I commit myself wholly to you. We can add in good times and bad times, but the main one is this one, forsaking all others. I am not going to sit down today before making sure you have committed yourself to be a person of the way, committed wholly to the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone and no other. <laughs> Does it mean there will not be pressure after you have made the commitment? Even in the midst when you are being pressurized, you are in that pressure cooker, you still say, forsaking all and remaining loyal just to you, Lord Jesus Christ. But in order to do that, you have to first get to a point where you acknowledge that the word of God in your life is supreme and that this word is divine and that you are going to make this word to be in force every, in every area of your life. To say, whatever I find myself in, this word will remain unchangeable. It is still in force. Remember, tell your friend, the word of God has to be in force. <laughs> you see, people of the way make the word of God have the force it needs to have in their lives. Listen to these scriptures, a couple of scriptures. First Corinthians 10 and, and verse 31. First Corinthians 10 
and 31. Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So you want the word of God to be in force in whatever you eat, in whatever you drink, in whatever you do, so that at the end of your doing what you are doing, your eating and the drinking, the glory comes to God. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 17 whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Once you have now established the fact that the word of God is supreme and it is in force, the second element that you need to work on is, will I allow this word to be in force in my life? Will I allow this word to be the only influence in my life? You see, it's so easy to say this word will be the only influence when you are outside pressure. Think about this. Let's go back to that situation where someone has died. And then as the family, they say, we as a family are now going to mourn and we are whatever they are saying and everyone is going to cut their hair for the dead. Will you stay, will you still allow the word of God to be your only influence? Or, my uncle has said, <laughs> my the brother to my mother, which makes him my uncle. Malume. So this Malume comes home. Malume and we are chatting and he says, I'm missing something. And I'm there to make him happy. So I said, what do you want, uncle? We can make it happen. And he says, I need some whiskey. I said, wrong choice, wrong place, wrong person. <laughs> I can give you some milk. <laughs> I can give you some tea. <laughs> and it's going to be rooibos tea. It looks like whiskey. <laughs> and then he says, but I'm your uncle, I can demand. I said, not this one. My word, the word of God remains the only influence in this house. <laughs> Oh, let's talk about South Africa. When things are tough and they've cut your electricity because of non-payment. And then, I don't know what you call those guys, the ones that come and say, we can, you see, we can be a blessing to you, you know. <laughs> uh, we can do a connection, but you know it's not a, a legal connection. And you are thinking, you know, it's very cold, the children need to bath hot water. 
so they will say, Nyana Fela, let's just do something and we'll do something for you. In that moment, do you still allow the word of God to be your only authority? Or you say, ah, the Lord understands, I'll confess later. <laughs> you see, guys, we cannot say we are a people of the way when we are not walking on this way. Can I hear an amen? Amen. The evidence that Paul was looking for was that he was going to be able to identify a people that are strict and they walk on this way only. Not a people that mix. Today they are the people of the way. Tomorrow they are invited the Nyoka. You call it the Nyoka guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is it Nyoka? Yeah. Amen. You, you heard from the Lord. <laughs> May God help us to be a people of the way. Amen. We cannot play games. If you heard what Pizzo said, says it's a new day. It's a new day to stick to allowing the word being the only influence in our lives. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So, what God is presenting to you today is the reality that God wants to place upon this house. God wants to emphasize something. To emphasize the seriousness of your commitment to his word. So, what I'm hearing God say is, play time is over. Turn to your friend. You, you cannot play anymore. It is illegal for you to sit down here week after week and listen to this word and not come to a place where you totally embrace this word. You cannot just sit here and say, Amen, preach it. <laughs> and you don't change and adapt. <laughs> and adopt this word so that you can live according to the influence that this word brings to you. Deuteronomy chapter 30. There are key words in so many words. I don't know. From verse 10 to verse 20. Deuteronomy Okay, I'll give you time to find it. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 30 verse 10. Deuteronomy 30, the now, what I want you to do as, as you listen or read this verse is look for verbs. The verb. The verb. Verbs. Eh? So in suit we say the verb. Madir. Okay, look for what? Madir. Now you've changed. <laughs> so look for key verbs. Let's read. If you, where's the verb? Obey the Lord your God to do what? To keep. So if you're underlining, you're underlining obey and you're underlining 
keep. Watokomela what? His commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. And if you what? Turn to the Lord, your God, with all your heart and your soul. For this commandment which I command you today is not difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. So in other words, what he's asking us to do is not difficult. Verse 12. It is not in heaven that you may say who will go up to heaven for us to get it for us and make us hear it, hear it, that we may, what? Observe it. Verse 13, No, is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea for us to get it for us and make us what? Hear it that we may what? Observe it. But the word of the Lord or the word of the word is near to you or near you in your mouth and in your heart that you may what? Observe. Do it. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. In that I command you today to do what? To love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply and that your God, uh, the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering. To do what? To possess it. But if your heart turns away and you will not obey and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, which is now the contrary part. I declare, to, oh, I what declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So what? Choose. Keta. Tell your friend, Keta. You Keta, eh? So Keta, life, in order that you may live and you and your descendants. Verse 20. 
Verse 20, the last one. By loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by upholding fast to him, for this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Amen. Amen and amen. What do you need to do? Every verb that you saw there, it's your action. So today, God is placing a demand upon each one of us to respond to his word. Will you make a decision to accept this to be what you are going to be doing from this day forward? <laughs> so what, if you are asked a question, what should you do? <laughs> to respond, eh? So how do you respond? <laughs> yes, I do. Can I hear? Yes, I do. Ah, but hang, hang in there. I knew there would be a lot of people say, yes, I do. <laughs> May I ask you to stand, please? Let's, let's get this marriage going, ceremony going. <laughs> like, woo, Pastor George, you are serious, eh? <laughs> All eyes fixed on whoever, who, who, except not a person in here, but the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know how you do that. Whether you look like this, whether you look that, but your eyes are fixed on him. And here is my first question. Do you choose and confess today from this moment forth that the word of God is the highest authority in your life? Yes, I do. Uh, so I want you to now take this moment and tell him, Mudimo, I'm now confessing. The word of God will be in force in every area of my life. Can you do that? Come on, talk to him. From your heart to his. Yes, Father, we declare this morning that your word is supreme, that your word is divine, and that your word will remain in force in my life. We will not let anything change this. This is the desire of our hearts. This is the plea of our hearts. This is the decision we are making without being forced, with no duress, that from this day we will walk according to your precepts, according to your law, according to your word. Everything that your word says, we will live according to that. Because we are the people of the way. We bless you, Father. Receive our commitment. We want your word to have the final say in our lives. Which means when there is pressure, we will still stick to the word and not stick to anything else. So, Father, help us to achieve this which we are asking and praying for. In the name of Jesus Christ, can someone say amen? Amen. Whilst you are still standing, the second demand. Do you choose today to make the word of God your only reality? 
That means every thought you think has to pass through the filter of the word before you do it. Everything you're thinking has to pass through this filter to align with the word of God. Your feelings will be guided by the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's, you are no longer permitted to have feelings outside what the word of God says. May your feelings be his feelings. Or may his feelings transfer and become your feelings. May everything you do be in accordance with the word of God. Can I hear an amen? Pastor George, yes? How about when the community is expecting us to do things contrary to the word? Then you know who wins. The community loses. The Lord Jesus Christ and his word remains in force. <laughs> Pastor George, yes sir. How about when there's family pressure and tradition? Ah, you know, thank you for asking. The answer remains. The word of the Lord remains in force. <laughs> How about the moment when I am pressurized because of past experiences? And past knowledge. Then I take that past knowledge and the experiences and I place it under the command of the word of God. That's how you make the word of God to be of complete effect. To be in force. So you see what you are asking God for. Despite all this, I want to make the word of God my only influence. Lift up those beautiful hands and make that declaration to him. Your your word will be the only influence that I have. Talk to him. Muruti Mukhale. Come. The word of God becomes your only influence. Nothing will influence you more than his word. So Father, I am marrying you to these people. May you connect yourself to them. They have made a commitment that your word will remain in force in every aspect of their lives. So it gives me honor, Father to declare them married to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, let's give Jesus a mighty Hallelujah. hand of praise. Hallelujah. You know, this, this message sounds like an introduction. 